Here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Mike the Tiger proudly stands guard over an elite athletic department at LSU. Tonight, one of LSU's top programs takes center stage in the form of women's gymnastics as the 13th ranked Tigers welcome in the third ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. It's women's gymnastics and it's next. This is the SEC on ESPN. We are in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, inside the Pete Maravich Assembly Center, the final SEC dual meet this season for the Alabama Crimson Tide and the LSU Tigers. Taking a look at your current 2012 national rankings in women's gymnastics, three SEC teams represented in the top five, Florida at number one, Georgia and Alabama tied at number three. And a great evening to you, Rich Hollenberg, alongside 10-time NCAA championship head coach Suzanne Yachlin and former Olympian Kathy Johnson-Clark. And Suzanne, I'll start with you because Alabama and LSU, we all know the football rivalry, but what you might not know is this is a big-time gymnastics rivalry. You were part of this rivalry five times. You came in here as a champion five times. What type of challenges does a home advantage really pose to a team like this? Well, it definitely poses some challenges. First of all, you got different equipment and that purple mat that can definitely throw you off when you're used to a red one or a black one. And then you've got the student section here. The student section is out of control. I actually loved it because I thrived on that hostile environment and got my competitive juices going. And I think Alabama will be like that tonight. They will want to rise to the, to the whole atmosphere and be able to demonstrate that they can perform well tonight. Now, with that said, Alabama comes in. The only undefeated, untied team in the nation. What should we expect from them tonight? Well, we have to expect for them to do better. I mean, they've been scoring so high at home, actually almost a point higher at home than on the road. So they need this road score. Not only do they need it to improve their ranking, but they also need it to improve the confidence of their team. This Alabama team is a contender for a national championship, Rich, and they need to know that they can compete under any circumstances, in any environment, any time. Okay, so challenges for Alabama on the road. That leads to us talking, Kathy, to LSU at home. They're really hitting their stride. They won three of their last four meets and they're undefeated here at home. With the exception of the first couple of meets, they have been competing very, very well. In fact, if you take out those scores, their average would be much higher and their rank would be up about two or three spots. Now, unlike Alabama, they have competed equally well both away and at home. That said, I am certain they are going to enjoy being at home in front of this crowd here and can come up with one of their biggest scores ever because the one thing they've done really well throughout the season rise to the occasion and compete well against the top ranked teams their best competition was against top ranked florida i expect the same here against the defending national champions alabama and you can expect to see a lot of purple and gold in the stands here at the pmac the scene is set the first rotation is about to get underway 20 sec titles between these two clubs lsu alabama women's gymnastics up next Back inside the Pete Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge. A quick reminder on dual meet formats in women's gymnastics. They'll do four rotations, the vault, the uneven bars, the beam, and the floor exercise. Six gymnasts per event for each team. The top five scores are counted. They throw out the lowest score. And this should be quite an interesting rotation. LSU begins on the vault, their very best event. They're ranked seventh in the country. Alabama begins on their weakest event, an event that they've struggled with consistency throughout the season thus far. Leading off for LSU and Dee Dee Bro's team, Jesse Jordan, one of the heralded freshman class out of Houston. Jesse is very, very consistent on this event. She is sort of a go-to competitor for LSU. The freshmen really have been remarkable this year. They rely heavily on them. Yurchenko with a full twist, a bit of a hop in the landing, good distance was very good. She actually had a little bit of a bent knee right here. Watch the little bit of a bent leg off the board. A little bent knee throughout the ball and piped in. First up for Alabama on the uneven bars, 5'3 junior Ashley Sledge. And I have to say I'm happy with them coming back to this lineup with Ashley Sledge leading off. She's such a strong opening routine for them. 
She has the last time she was here two years ago. She missed on bars, so she has a lot to prove tonight. She is getting after it right here. And you can see really going after the handstand position, something the judges really look for. It's huge on this event. I talked to Dave Patterson in the warm and he said he loves Ashley in the lead-off position. Watch this at dismount. It's gigantic. Double layout and a fantastic win. It is textbook. She absolutely does one of the best double layouts in the country. Rises above the bar on the second flip. Perfect landing, and her body position on the landing is excellent. A solid score for Jesse Jordan, LSU's first vaulter, 9.80. Second up for LSU, Aaliyah Mathis. Now, at this point in the season, you are really looking for stock landings. They start, they have to start honing in on perfecting routines and not giving away tenths of a point on the landing. And LSU is hoping for a big start on vaulting. This is an event where they can take the lead against Alabama and throw them out of their rhythm. And so they need these stuck landings. Malia scored a 9.875 last week, so she can get it done. A 9.80 for Ashley Sledge on the first bar routine. Solid vault. Going after the half twist. A little bit more difficult landing, blind landing. But watch how she walks out of the landing and never really shows control before she turns. Becca Alexin will step up next in the uneven bars for Alabama. Interesting, a little tight on scores. Sometimes we see those scores just fly up to the high. Marks. This is a key routine, I think, for Alabama. Last week, Becca looked a little shaky, both in the warm-ups and in competition. Watch that release. A pretty good backspin there, better than usual. She was coached by her parents, which, by the way, had 18 athletes get Division I scholarships. 9.8, so ruling the day so far, 9.8 from Malia Mathis. Oh! right on the edge of the map, that makes it difficult to stick. I actually like the scoring so far in this competition. I think they've been a little bit too high this season. And when you start out high in the beginning, you have nowhere to go, and the judges get boxed in with the scores. Back to the vault, number three for LSU, Kaylee Dixon, second team All-America in 2011. She's a five-footer, sophomore out of Oldsmar, Florida. As I mentioned earlier, they really need to come up with some stock landings here, especially at home. You've got such an enthusiastic crowd. You've got so much support. Let's see if she can hone in on this landing. Ruchenko full. No. It's a big step. Her weight actually shifted back. Her weight shifted back. So that's a bigger landing deduction. Back to the uneven bar. Sarah DeMeo steps up next for Sarah Patterson's Crimson Tide. At this point in the competition, I would say Alabama's out competing LSU in terms of just hitting the elements of the routine, nailing the landing. No score posted yet for Becca Alexa. Both of the first two Alabama athletes actually missed handstands, and I think the judges are really going to start hitting that as we get closer to postseason. And they need to, because as you mentioned, the scores are just so high and so tight together, and there really is a separation between these routines. And a 9.725 for Becca Alexa. And you have to look at every element and, and look at the amplitude and the extension. She's definitely going for her handstands on that. I think she's seen a couple of short handstands. That one was short at the end, but... Well, that last handstand yeah. will cost her a lot because it was considerably short. It's not just about sticking on this one. This, this score can actually be lower than the other two because of that last handstand. Nice release, here, but she's below the bar when she catches the Yeager. DeMeo, a 2011 All-American at that discipline. Next up for LSU on the ball. Lamencia Hall, 4 foot 11 freshman from Dallas, Texas. The lot previous score by Kaylee Dixon, 9.725. A lot of power packed into that 4 foot 11 inch frame. She does the blind landing, the half turn front layout. Or out of control. Again, they have not had one stuck landing yet tonight. Yeah, really hard to get control of the adrenaline. And she pulls her head forward instead of really laying it back. Feel that landing and go for it. Every one of LSU's gymnasts so far in vaulting has scored a little bit below their average, and that's not what you want when you get to this point in the season. 
Going to the bars, Caitlin Clark will be up next. She's a five foot one inch freshman from out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. She made her debut this season against the University of Georgia in the vault and the bars. And Sarah DeMeo receives a 9.8 for her previous effort. Caitlin Clark has only missed one bar team the entire season. Nice opening combination. Oh, short on the handstand there. Well, these handstands are definitely getting Alabama tonight. Lindsey Hall credited with a 9.8 on her vault for LSU. There's another really, really short handstand right there. Wow, they got the discounts figured out. <laughs> there you go. It's almost like the free throw in basketball. When you get nervous, you hold back, you get a little bit tight. Full yes. twisting double layout. Stop. They've definitely mastered their landings. <laughs> Back to the vault, Randy Lau, a five-foot freshman from Honolulu, Hawaii, who will compete in the vault, the bars, and the beam for Dee Dee Bro. She stepped in last week when Mincy Hall had some problems with her foot and scored a career high of 9-9. Sort of earned her a spot in this competition tonight. Randy has been progressing so well throughout this season, getting better and better. That's their best landing so far. That is the only solid landing of the night. This is what they've been waiting for. Good direction and height, and the solid landing. You know, you cannot focus on the stick. She was a little turned on the table, slightly cockeyed on the table, but boy, does that landing make you happy. And it showed in her reaction, didn't it? Next up on the uneven bars, one of the best here at this meet, Gerilyn Stack Eaton, the senior for Alabama. And a true veteran. She is so calm under pressure. She's the type of athlete that comes up big in the biggest pressure situation. Watch this release at the beginning of the bar routine. She does it better than anyone else in the country. Toe on, toe off, release, above the bar. Perfect execution. Caitlin okay, Clark received a 9.8 prior to Jaron Stack Eaton's effort. And you just can't say enough about her form, how tight her legs are, toes pointed, excellent technique. I love this dismount because she does a full turn, a full pirouette into a double front. Wow. wow, that's a beautiful routine. <laughs> that is unbelievable difficulty. I love the variety of difficulty. It's spaced out through the routine, but release is huge. And she has a lot more difficulty than what's required. And at the end of the season, that's gonna make a difference. Right here, doing this dismount out of combination gives her three tens and bonus. Eight-time All-American, Jalen Stackey. Next up, the final participant in the vault for LSU, Reagan Corville. Five foot two inch freshman out of Baton Rouge, a local girl. This is a very pretty vault. If she can come up with a landing, she can come up with a score that LSU needs here. Almost. It was a nice spot, though. Yes, it was gorgeous. Good height, good distance, and good balance throughout the vault. And, and before definitely her, the best vault of the night. Suzanne, before her, Randy Lau scored a 9.85, which is at this point the highest score in the vault. And this one may be a little bit higher because I liked the balance of height and distance. She's had a 9.9 in the last six weeks, so it's possible. A 9.875 for Gerilyn Stack Eaton. Ashley Priest made, made me a little bit nervous in the warm up. She did not have a good warm up on this event, very uncharacteristic. But she has a gorgeous combination right here. Bonus. Watch this full. Bonus. Beautiful inter-release move. More bonus and more bonus. <laughs> Just back to back to back to back. And then a little bit of a miss, and she's got to cover it up. It's not a major deduction, but probably one ten, at least one ten. I'll tell you what, this is a huge relief after the warm-up she had. What a veteran performer to come up so big and cover so well the tiny mistake. Watch the oh. difficulty at the beginning of the bar routine. Combination bonus into a release which has bonus, into another release, so she's got difficulty bonus and combination bonus back to back to back. Love it. First rotation nice really heated up toward the end there. Reagan Corville for LSU scored a 9.9 .9 on the vault. Ashley Priest. Promising to get a top score as well on the bars. Coming up when we return to the Pete Maravich Assembly Center, Alabama LSU, the number one vault team in the nation, the Crimson Tide, showing their stuff.
Back inside the Pete Maravich Assembly Center on the campus of LSU in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, SEC Women's Gymnastics, and we are deadlocked after one rotation, number three Alabama and number 13 LSU at 49.15. And Kathy, who does that favor after one rotation? Well Actually, I think Alabama outcompeted LSU because LSU missed their opportunity. They needed to come up big on the landings on vault and nail those landings. And now up next, Alabama has the vault, and they are number one in the nation, as you can see, averaging 49.421. That's tops in the country. They could arguably be one of the best vaulting teams in the history of collegiate gymnastics. They have five different gymnasts who've scored above a 9-9 this season alone with two scoring tens. They have so much depth that their lowest counting score is sometimes higher than other teams' best vaulter. And with Alabama on the vault, that means LSU will be on the uneven bars. First up for Alabama, Kayla Williams, a five foot two inch freshman from Huntington, West Virginia. She specializes in the vault. She led off for the Crimson Tide versus Arkansas last week. A former world champion, not bad to have as your lead off gymnast. Yeah, really, she scored a 987 last week. I think if she can get a good landing, Oh, wow. that's not quite the landing you want, especially when you've had the momentum that they just built over at the uneven bars hitting those landings. It's not just that, but LSU built some momentum on vaulting by having a couple good vaulters that she could have built on as well if she had stuck that landing. And out of the uneven bars, the first up for LSU, Lenine Fleming, five foot seven sophomore from Glendale. Tell you what, LSU really performed well the last time I saw them on this event competed much better than they warmed up. That's a great sign for a team. This is a good leadoff bar routine. She's hit almost all of her routines so far this season. A little bit of a problem there on that one and a half twisting dismount. A 9-8 for Kayla Williams, the first vaulter for Alabama. Up next will be Caitlin Clark. I don't know about you, but I think I see a stick in her eyes. There's something there that it's like, no, I need to get this going again. I love the landings on bars. Let's do it here, too. This is the kind of athlete that gives Alabama that depth that separates them from other teams in the country. Very, very strong second up vaulting. And not enough control on that landing. But she fought for it, I tell you what. Maybe that's what I saw in her eyes. It's like, I am going to try my best not to move my feet here. Get the arms up fast. <laughs> not a perfect vault. It showed a lot of spunk there fighting for the landing. Jesse Jordan will be up next on the uneven bars for LSU. Interesting note about her. She graduated high school early to join the Tigers here in Baton Rouge. She graduated this past December, and since then she's been in every rotation, in every meet for the Tigers. She had a little bit of trouble in warm-ups today, missing her release move a couple times, so it's really important to get that out of your head before you mount those bars. 9.77 for Caitlin Clark. 9.775. They're really looking for those landings. That's a lot lower than her average so far this year. The judges are definitely looking for that total vault. Speaking of judges, we're still waiting on Fleming's score on the bars, which is why Jesse Jordan hasn't taken her turn yet. Titi's over there calculating Jordan. scores. She knows, she knows it's a little bit lower than what she was hoping for. But at this point in the season, the judges are starting to tighten up, and that's exactly what they need to be doing. It was a 9-6 for Fleming. So Jesse Jordan's got some work to do. Here comes the release right here at the beginning of the routine that she missed in warm-ups. She releases and does a front flip in a style position. Not at this time. Easy. I like this Sapphire a lot. She's really intense and she's really improved throughout the season. A little bit close to that bar. Oh, it's a good thing she trimmed her toenails. I'm telling you, she was right there. You almost lost your this breath. Yeah, Jaeger again, above the bar. A little tight there, too, but nice straight arms. On her dismount, good body position. You really want to make sure that you're in that stretch position. No arch and no pike. Next up on the vault for Alabama, Ashley Sledge, the five foot three inch junior from out of Fairview Heights, Illinois. She's ranked eighth in the country in this discipline. And this could be a big score for them. 
Ankles have been a little bit sore, but boy, you can't tell there. Now we'll see what the judges are going to do with this. They finally get that stuck landing that they've been looking for and wanting, but she definitely piped in a lot on the landing, a lot more than I would like to see. With the chest down, as you see that she spots the floor and bends in the hips before she comes onto the floor. Jesse Jordan had a 9.75 for LSU as the second lady on the uneven bars, third up for LSU, Randy Lau. And Sledge receives a 9.875. That's the high score for Alabama on the ball. I'm impressed with the progression this athlete is making throughout the season. I just love how Didi gets the most out of her athletes. She really uses that adrenaline. She gets in their face, she pumps them up. She believes in them and gives them a lot of confidence. It's really what it's all about. Randy missed her Jaeger in warm-ups as well, and no problem there. Keeping them calm, but pumped up is the way to go. And what a routine for her. Nice job. Why do I think? This is a giant full pirouette to immediate double tuck. Fulfills the requirement because it's combination bumps. Yes, she knew she had trouble in warm-ups. What do athletes want to do that? Mess up in warm-ups, and then they always come through in competition. Randy Lau scored in a 9.85 in the vault, and another solid performance on the bars. Next up for Alabama, the first time we get a look at Marissa Gutierrez, the 5'2 junior out of Houston. 2011 All-American on the vault. Such a strong team competitor. Look at that. Good for her. <laughs> I like the face, especially. Yes. She piped in a little too, but I love how she flared it. She really got that nice layout position at the end of the ball, laid out. Really, really pretty little flare there. And I love her, right? Suzanne, you had said earlier that you think she could be the key to Alabama's success this year. Why is that? I, because she's like the fourth counting score. The fifth, everyone in the country's got these top two, you know, 995ers. But What's that fourth county score? What athlete's delivering that? And, and Marissa does it week after week after week. She's one of the most consistent, high-scoring athletes on her team. Here's Mincy Hall on the uneven bars. Loud credited with a 9.8. Whoa! Good handstand. Just a little loose in her body position and her form. This is almost like a wild ride, but she's hanging <laughs> on. And, wow, nice layout position. And on this one. I felt like I needed seatbelts, though. <laughs> These gymnasts are really stepping up. Marissa Gutierrez for Alabama scored a 9.925 on the vault. It's definitely the best vault of the night. And now we get our second look at Geraldine Stack Eaton, the senior from out of Horsham, Pennsylvania, eight-time All-American. And I'll tell you what I like about this gymnast. She really combines power with finesse. She has a lot of amplitude on this ball, but watch the form and the position and technique. I love the straight landing. Watch for this body being straight when she contacts the floor. Oh, oh shoot. We don't want to oh. watch for that hop. <laughs> no, that's she, not what we're used to yeah, seeing, but unlucky. the ball was pretty in unlucky. the air. Yeah, she yeah. pogo sticked it a little bit. Yeah. But I she think, really does stay straight, and I love that. I think they have a little <laughs> launch pad or something right there on the mat, and it just sent her flying. That's too bad she had a 995 last week, and that's not happening tonight. Lamencia Hall had a 9.75 on the bars for LSU. Next up, Reagan Corville. Reagan Corville competes in the all-around. She's five foot two inch freshman from out of Baton Rouge. She is the highest average on the team on the uneven bars. That's obviously why she's the anchor. That release move was a little bit below the bar. Again, you have to start separating athletes and looking for that amplitude on the skills. Jalen Stacky credited with a 9.75 for her ball. Very smooth bar routine. Oh, why did you take that step? <laughs> we'll get your Reagan Corville score on the uneven bars in just a moment. Last up on the vault for Alabama. Five foot three inch sophomore out of Wichita, Deandra Miller. She's 14th in the nation in this discipline. 
this is by far her strongest event. She's so athletic. She can just shine on this event because it is about athleticism, power, speed. And she makes it look easy. Wow, right out of her feet, way the up there. One and a half twist. So she's got more difficulty than most in the competition on this event. And it is way up there. Beautiful block. Unfortunately, got some knee bend in there, but if she could really straighten that out. I've seen her do it this year with the straight legs. Actually, when she scored the 10, her legs were much straighter than in this fight. She looks happy with her effort. Last up on the bars for LSU will be the 5'9 sophomore out of Dallas, Sari Morrison, with 12 individual titles to her credit. Well, and I know Dee Dee is happy to have her back in the lineup, especially on this event. She had ankle surgery after one of their competitions, and she's not back in the lineup on the other events. And Alabama's really been outscoring uh, LSU on each, on each competitor back and forth. They've been outscoring in almost every position, so they are definitely taking the lead after, in this rotation. Need a big score here for Sari. Reagan Corville credited with a 9.825 prior to Morrison. Nice job hitting the handstands in this routine. Very precise. And DeAndre Milliner, a 9.925 for the Alabama vault. Big swing, good difficulty on the dismount. she really came through at the end of their lineup. Really showed much better routines at the end. Full twisting double back. She seems pleased. We'll see what the judges say. We are halfway through the final SEC dual meet of the 2011-2012 season. Next up, the third rotation, the beam and the floor right after this. Rich Hollenberg, Kathy Johnson-Clark, Suzanne Yachlin inside the Pete Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Alabama with a 98.45 after two rotations, LSU 98.125 after two rotations, and the Crimson Tide ranked third in the nation right now, Kathy, but poised to defend their national championship, and it doesn't get any easier. They have a meet next week against Oklahoma. Now, but one thing Sarah Patterson really likes to do with her team is pace them, manage their workouts, manage their competition so that they peak in the postseason. This will be really interesting on this event because this is the event that Alabama is averaging lower than the other top teams in the country, like Oklahoma, where they go next week. So in order to be competitive with Oklahoma and Florida and the other top teams, they have got to be able to nail this event on the road. So we'll see what happens. This is the third rotation of this dual meet. LSU will be on the balance beam. Alabama will be showcasing their floor exercise. First up for the LSU Tigers. A late addition to the top six for D.D. Bro, Shelby Prunty, a five foot four inch junior out of Illinois in just her third meet this season. And she competed a lot in 2011. She only had two breaks total in all of her routines out of 35 routines that she competed. So she's very consistent. requirements on balance beam are to have a split leap of 180 degree split. You don't have to do that in combination, but you have to do 180 split during your beam routine somewhere. And I've actually found that one thing to be lacking in many of the teams we've covered so far is showing that complete split. In my opinion, it should actually be in every leap that you do if, it, if it's a split jump of any type really show that flexibility. I agree, Kathy. These judges really need to take the deductions and execution so that you can separate the athletes. There's a good way to do a skill, and there's a great way to do a skill. And you've got to look at the amplitude and the body position. LSU as a team ranks 17th in the nation in this discipline. Cartwheel gainer full. You see that dismount quite a bit. Again, body position is important. That was Shelby Prunty, first up on the floor exercise for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Kim Jacob, a five foot two inch sophomore out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And we've talked about this before. 
competing on floor exercise and somebody else's arena is not the easiest thing to do. It, it makes it feel more like work <laughs> than fun. Absolutely, and it's not just the atmosphere, it's also the floor exercise mat. I mean, they are different from gym to gym. There are some that are harder and some that are, give a little bit, and an athlete does have to make that adjustment. During championship, during championships, you have a day to come in early and practice before the competition. You've been here before as a coach of the Georgia Bulldogs. Suzanne, what is this map like? <laughs> well, our team actually hated it. I mean, it used to be yellow, and the girls thought they were on the ceiling when they were on the floor. So <laughs> they really struggled sometimes. I can remember getting beat here on a year that we went on to win the national title. Shelby Prunty starts off LSU's beam discipline with a 9.825. Now this is interesting, I'm not sure what tumbling she'll do tonight, but typically her second and third passes are very similar to each other. Back one and a half, front full, and she'll come back later on and do a pass that's similar, but it's okay to do that. really worked hard on is endurance so that they can finish strong. And here comes that last pass again. It's another back one and a half foot with the front layout this time. So a little variation. You can get the combination bonus, but you can't get the same skill bonus twice. Really the best part of this routine was not, not so much the power in the tumbling. She's not the, the highest tumbler, the most difficult tumbling passes, but very clean form throughout this routine. And, and a lot of fun. She yes. just really has a good time out there, and I enjoy it. Next up on the beam for LSU, Kaylee Dixon, the five-foot sophomore out of Oldsmar. Did your gymnast find competing at home more relaxing, or away you know i don't know i mean we just oh, oh that's too bad it was a one arm into the back pants when out step out which gives you a little bit more bonus also harder harder easier to fall and second up in the lineup you hate to have someone miss that early in the lineup but getting back to your question kathy you know we just we love to win and so many teams in the country right now are all about getting that score but to me, you go out to compete to win, and if you take that emotion out of it, and you just talk about scores all the time, then you're losing some of you know what you can get from the athlete. She almost didn't get that connection, had a little balance break. You really need to go right into the dismount. Yeah. She's a little frustrated right there. You can see it in her body language. Front handspring, and she goes right into the gainer back tuck dismount. But you can see she's disappointed. Deandra Milliner will be next up on the floor exercise for Alabama. Kim Jacob, her teammate, started off for Alabama on the floor and scored a 9.8. And did so with very clean, very nice, expressive dance form. Deandra is a tumbler. Let's watch here on this first tumbling pass, a double Arabian. You see this a lot. You're supposed to open before you land. And she does. She extends her legs into the floor before she hits the floor. It's very nice. judges will be looking for during postseason, Kathy, is the difficulty in each of the tumbling passes. And some of the judges are going to start taking that deduction. They have to take that deduction when you get to championships because it's their job to rank the athletes and make sure the best team wins. Leander has a great first and third pass, but the middle pass probably should be upgraded, and I would imagine Sarah's planning to do that. You're right. This is the biggest part of the routine. Pike double back at the end. She does it very well. Nice and high. Love that. 
Alabama ranked second in the nation in the floor exercise routine. Here's a good example of why. Clearly the highlight is her tumbling, and particularly this last pass. She lands so high, her po body position is so upright when she lands. It's beautiful. Here's Randy Lau for LSU on the balance beam. And this is a very important routine. Kaylee Dixon scored an 8.85 on this routine moments ago. Exactly, and that's the score they want to drop. They need a hit routine right here, get them back on track. And that's the problem when you only have five tenths of bonus in your routine, the minimum amount. If you have a fall, you're not getting that bonus, so you've got not only the deduction for the fall, but you've also got the start value problems. It's not a big deal if you throw out that score, but Didi is certainly hoping that she doesn't have to count an 8-8 in the team total. Every little tenth makes a difference. Double whammy. Randy's been 50% this year in hitting beam. She just raised her average a little bit. Randy Lau! I love the sigh at the end. <laughs> Huge sigh of relief. Big smile. They needed it after the 885 from Dixon. DeAndre Milliner scored a 9-9 on the floor exercise. Third up for the Crimson Tide, Laura Lee Frost. She's one to watch in this exercise. A career best 9-9 in their last meet against Arkansas. Oh, and it was a wonderful moment for her to step in on the floor exercise in front of the home crowd. You can see her exclaim at the end of the routine, I did it, I did it. She was so excited to hit that last pass. Oh, a little bit low on that double layout. Difficulty was very good, but. Lau comes back for LSU with a 9.85 on the beam. This is where Sarah Patterson and, and her coaching staff really have some decisions to make. Do you put in the athlete with the potential to score the highest, or do you put in the more consistent athlete? Do you go for that sure thing of that 9-8, or do you go for that 9-9 and risk maybe a mistake? Laura Lee Frost is one of those athletes. She can go big, but she also has made some mistakes this season. one of the reasons that Sarah really likes to play around with the lineup to give opportunity to some of these gymnasts to see how they respond in competition. Give them that experience so if they're called upon, they've got some routines under pressure, under the belt. 34 years on the job, it's hard to argue. Strong. And great last pass. We'll take a quick time out and be back with the final routines on the third rotation, LSU, Alabama, after this. We're halfway through the third rotation. Balance beam for LSU, floor exercise for Alabama. Jesse Jordan, the freshman, is up next for the Lady Tigers. I've been watching her throughout this season, and she's just got no drama. You know, she just focuses, gets her job done. I like that about it. I used to tell our team, save your drama for your mama. <laughs> and that from a freshman. Just, you can see the intensity in her face. I like the performance quality. Not everyone performs on balance beam. They just do the routine. She really kind of puts an exclamation mark. Nine seven two five for Laura Lee Frost on the floor exercise for Alabama. So they really did hit her for that low first pass. This is a solid routine. Oh, and I love the footwork and just the precise positions, elegant hands. There now. Oh, don't take that step. Lovely Jesse routine. Jordan. Great job for LSU. They've already got posted a couple scores above a nine eight. Well, here are the three scores so far for the balance beam discipline for the LSU Tigers. Obviously, they'll be dropping or hoping to drop Kaylee Dixon's 8.85 score. Up next, Marissa Gutierrez for Alabama in the floor exercise. 
think one thing Alabama really needs to be able to do is to create their own energy when they're away from their home crowd, particularly on this event. It's, it's just really, really difficult, to, difficult, but one of the advantages for Alabama, all the SEC schools, is the SEC championships are at the Gwinnett Center, and the national championships are there as well, so an SEC team really has an advantage at the NCAAs this year. Jesse Jordan scored a 9.85 on her beam exercise. That's back-to-back 9.85s for LSU. Watch this middle pass, the same as the other ones we saw earlier tonight. Front full, front layout, not as difficult as some others. I think it's a little bit flat, and I love her first and last tumbling pass. Gutierrez has two individual floor titles this season. And she's also had a low 9-6, so this is the reason that the Alabama team has not been scoring well in floor. Everyone is not on the same page in the same meet, except for at home. Doing a little bit better tonight, though. No major errors, and they look strong. Not seeing quite the same energy we saw when they competed at home. That's the thing that I was talking about, that they need to be able to create that. But this is a long season. They're hitting routines. They're getting good landings. We'll update you on Melissa Gutierrez's score on the floor exercise. Next up for LSU, Mincy Hall. I think a couple weeks ago when Mincy was competing in Florida, I called her fierce, and that's just what she looks like. She's just got such determination and such a competitor. Dee Dee says she just lights up the gym in practice. And she's very competitive. Oh, wow, she good. saved it, but she, she's got kind of the heebie-jeebies with her feet. She needs to really, really control. I think that's where I see the nerves is in her footwork. But she's got bad feet. She's actually got trouble with her arches and her plantar fascia, and that's the reason that she didn't compete last week on Baltic. She struggles with problems with her feet. And the beam probably doesn't feel too good on the bottom of the foot when you catch that corner or that edge. Updating on the floor exercise scores, Marissa Gutierrez scored a 9.825. The difficulty on the dismount and a much better landing on this double back than the last time we saw. A little off to the side. <laughs> Watch her footwork here. Yeah, you can see her, her, she's just not solid on her feet. She saved this one because she was also off to the side. But that save means a great deal to this team score right now. Exactly, otherwise you're counting a fall. Up now for Alabama, Ashley Priest. Now this is definitely an enjoyable performance. Keep in mind, this is an athlete who had surgery on both ankles, missed her senior season last year. So she doesn't do the hardest tumbling, but she does what she needs to do. And she does it perfect. There's absolutely no deduction in that double tuck. I love the dance right here, the switch leap ring. She gets that head back and really has beautiful split. 9.8 for Mincy Hall. And the judges just changed it to a 9.75. So a 9.75 for Mincy Hall. Another front full front layout, but her front layout rose up and had good height. And so the amplitude really made a difference. And this legs perfectly together. Right. This is my favorite part of the routine right here. Tuck double. How hard is that? <laughs> Priest ranked first in the nation in all around. I'd say this music puts a bounce in your step. <laughs> Strong finish, pike double back. Her legs looked like they wanted to give up just a little bit at the end, but she stayed with it. Nice job, especially away from home. 
You can see the difference, though, between these home, these away performances and the home ones. I don't know if it's the mat, I don't know if they're tired, but... The energy just lifts you. The energy of the crowd, when you know they're behind you. Here goes the tech double. This is one-tenth bonus. Knees are a little low, but because she gets it all the way around, it's probably overlooked because she really does it well. Here's Reagan Corville, the sixth and final participant on the beam for LSU. LSU needs this hit. I like that on her full turn, which is a requirement on the balance beam, that she does it with the leg elevated. Oh, gorgeous. Arabian. Arabian, blind landing. She is beautiful on the balance beam. LSU right now, even though they've got that one fall they can throw out, they're actually averaging higher as a team right now than their average as a team coming into the meet. So they, this has been their best event so far tonight. Pretty good positions on those leaps and the shoot down. I like how she gets into the dismount. It's just an easier dismount, but she has a great distribution of difficulty by doing a front tuck, which is one tenth bonus, and putting it at the end. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, no. Wow. That was a good save right there. <laughs> it was. It really, it almost looked like the landing surprised her. Here's the standing Arabian again, the only athlete in the country, I believe, that's doing this right now. That is the best part, in collegiate gymnastics. In collegiate gymnastics, yes. Front tuck, nicely done. Good concentration, but boy, she pulled her feet all the way through. That was really the only deduction in the routine. And talk about a murderer's row for Alabama on the floor. It goes from Gutierrez to Priest with a 9-8, and now Geraldine Stockey. And this is a lovely routine, a total performance. Let's just enjoy the dance, the tumbling, everything. Unfortunately, they're not building their scores like what you, you know, like what, what they, I'm sure, hope to do going into Geraldine's routine. They want to build their scores. Wow, that was beautiful. She's ranked fourth in the nation in this discipline. I love how soft the landings are. Reagan Corville with a 9.825, the final beam exercise for LSU. Geraldine had a 9.95 last week at home. And this routine to me is actually better than that one because the double Arabian tonight it was much better. My favorite routines. This is the best the I've seen her do it yes, since that last is year. Yeah, last year at the NCAAs, of course, floor exercise champion. It was almost as good tonight, just fabulous. I just like that she dances the routine. I mean, the choreography, the performance quality, the drama. And then, of course, the, the tumbling. She has it all. Reminds me of you. The drama. <laughs> no, I'm yes. just, it's just it's so expressive. It's beautiful. Comes from the soul. <laughs> A spectacular finish on the floor exercise for Alabama. Solid all the way through. Our third rotation is in the books. We're coming up with our fourth and final rotation. Alabama will be on the beam. LSU, the floor exercise. We'll have your third rotation scores after this. Rich Hollenberg back inside the Pete Maravich Assembly Center on the campus of LSU. Alabama, after three rotations, leads by four and a half tenths of a point, 147.675 to 147.625 over LSU. So does LSU still have a chance to get that elusive 197? You know, I'm not sure. The floor exercise is a tough event for them. They haven't been that strong on this event. You need to pay, you need to score about a 49.25 on each event and average that in order to get to that 197 pace. So they're close. It's going to be a good scoring meet for them tonight, but I think they're going to be a little short of that 197. Alabama's on the beam. It's Deandra Milliner starting off.
Alabama's ranked sixth on this event. Oh, got a little balance break. Okay, now that could be a problem for her because she was supposed to do a jump out of that front aerial, which would have given her combination bonus. And in watching her routine and warm she had the minimum amount of bonus needed. <gasps> oh, well. That's a much that's, bigger problem. Yeah, that's a much bigger problem. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. It looked like her foot slipped. Yeah. Right. Bounced off. Ah. Oh, totally missed on the ah. side of the beam. And they hurt me hurt. too. That hurt. It's so hard when the first step falls. And that's the kind of fall that she won't feel until she walks up and then go, oh my gosh. I'm not sure what what Alabama's doing with their beam lineup. Kim Jacob led off the first four meets of the season, then they moved her to third, then they moved her to second in the lineup. I'm not sure why don't, they don't have this lineup order set at this point of the season. Certainly a different philosophy than yours. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Balanced beam and bars, we set the lineup as early as we could and pretty much tried to leave it that way. And if we put in someone else, we put them in the same spot as the person who came out. I just like to get that chemistry going with the team. Oh, too bad, and a tough start for Alabama. To start with a fall, they need to really kick it in here with their second routine. Now, Tiger First up on the floor exercise the for LSU, Kay Dixon. For LSU. She had a red shirt in the fall of 2010 following a knee injury, but she's back. She set out the Auburn meet. Looking to finish off strong with her floor routine. Rich, now you'll get to see the difference in competing at home on the floor exercise. You already feel the energy in the arena for this team. And although this is, has not been a high scoring event for LSU, it is the event that they have, that their high score is the closest to their average, which means they have been consistent. Home, away, week after week, they're averaging just about the same all the time. And every tenth of a point really counts at this point in the season. Absolutely, because you are going for that ranking position, which will seed you in the regional competition. And there's only three to four more meets for each team before the SEC championships. That was a beautiful first pass. A 9-2-2-5 for DeAndre Milliner. Disappointing, to say the least. on that uh, second tumbling run on the landing. Let's see if she can nail this final tumbling run. So far, it's been a solid start for LSU. Better landing, a lot of sparkle in that routine. On this first pass, she does a front one and a half twist to an immediate back layout, and the back layout just sort of loaded down. I love the amplitude. Next up on the beam, Kim Jacob for the Crimson Tide. Big routine here. Huge. You know, Kathy, we alluded to my philosophy versus Sarah's in terms of lineup. There's no right way. The, the biggest thing is for a coach to be consistent and fair and the athlete buy into the system. And Alabama athletes have bought into the system of warming up and who's hot gets to go. And Sarah doesn't make a decision on the lineup until after warm-ups, and that's worked for them. They have five national championships. Exactly, that's what I was gonna say. As long as the athletes are on board and are fine with the system and it works for them, that's what you're aiming for. I love that. He jumped to a full, a straddle with a full turn, very difficult. A 9-8 for Kaylee Dixon on the floor exercise. Good strong opening event for LSU on the floor. It's interesting, this seems much more like an opening routine to me, just as a, as a... I loved her first time. Here's one of your favorite skills coming right now, Kathy, the side aerial with two feet. She does that so solidly. I've never seen her have a wobble on it in her whole career. She has one individual title this season, and it comes on the balance beam. Just a natural beam worker, very, Beautiful. very uncanny in her ability to Beautiful. hone in on landings. And that's the kind of first step I would have loved to have had. <laughs> or anywhere in the lineup, it's just beautiful. 
Next up on the floor for LSU, Ashley Lee, the sophomore. Five foot five inch, actually she's a senior, the only senior on this LSU roster. Yes, they have a very young team. is this athlete really stepped up her training to be in the floor lineup. She's kind of in and out of the floor lineup and uh, she really wants to be secured in her senior year. I like this choreography. A 9-8-7-5 for Kim Jacob in Alabama's second beam floor beam exercise. Does Ashley Claire Kearney do the choreography? Yes. She's their volunteer coach, a national champion on this event. Very nice. It's important to note here on this last pass, that's Sarah and her daughter, by the way. On this last pass, a double tuck has the same value as a double tight, double pike. So it doesn't really matter which body position the athlete has. It's the landing position that matters. Dee Dee Bro and her daughter really enjoyed that one. Next up for Alabama on the beam, Marissa Gutierrez. And as you mentioned, and I completely agree, having a gymnast like Marissa in your lineup is such such a good feeling. You just there's a level of confidence there in her consistency. And she averages above a 9.8 on all three of the events that she performs. So she's not just consistent on beam. She's just consistent everywhere. That solid at every team needs. One thing I'm noticing, and it's a little bit of a pet peeve. Nice aerial walk over right into the jump. But it, low legs on the split loops, the back leg, the, it's almost like the forgotten leg because it's behind you, you, but we all see it and it needs to just be up a little bit higher and it's not just Marissa, it's kind of across the board. You definitely didn't get away with that, did you? <laughs> Scores just came in for Ashley Lee on the floor exercise for LSU at 9.825. What's interesting in these leaps, you really want to freeze that. Ooh, she saved that, just landed a little bit awkwardly. But you really want to freeze that position um, so that the judges see it in the air. You almost have to go beyond split. You do have to go beyond split to show us, but good landing. She did that well. Sarah Patterson likes what she sees. Next up on the floor exercise for LSU, Malia Mathis. This is an interesting athlete for LSU. She competed in the anchor position last year, hit this double layout every single week, but it struggled with it this year. It's come in low a couple times, missed the last pass a couple times, and Didi said, that's it. You're gonna have to do this double layout in practice, alone, on the hard floor, if you wanna stay in the floor lineup. And according to Didi, she's, she's nailed it in practice, so hopefully that's gonna carry over right here in this first pass. Much better than what we saw a couple weeks ago against Florida. Gutierrez scores a 9-7-7-5 for Alabama's third beam exercise. The NCAA champion from Georgia, Courtney McCool, had this floor music. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of when I'm watching. Can 
nice routine. Very nice. By far the best one she's done uh, this season. We're halfway through the fourth rotation. Can LSU somehow pull off the upset or Alabama roll on to stay unbeaten? The home stretch is next. We're halfway through the fourth rotation. Alabama on the beam, LSU on the floor. Here's what it looks like for the Crimson Tide so far. Marissa Gutierrez pulling a 9775 most recently up next for Sarah Patterson. It's Sarah DeMeo. That mount is one of my favorite parts of her routine. So many gymnasts choose not to do a difficult mount, just and, not risk it. You know, and I love it when someone comes up and do that, but I'm sure that she hits it every single time. She's 100% hitting it, or Sarah would not have that in the beginning of the beam routine. And watch this flip-flop layout. We've talked about it, it's an, it's, it lacks some amplitude. She's always solid, as can be on the landing. But you'd like to see it just a little bit higher off the beam. A little more lift, instead of just sort of whipping it over. I love the rest of the routine. That's the one skill that's bothered me just a little bit. A solid 9.85 on the floor exercise from Malia Mathis of LSU. Alabama looks so strong on bounce beam now. They had that first problem right off the bat from DeAndre Milner, but everyone has just been solid since that first routine. You can see this team hitting its stride now. And again, I know I, I keep picking at this, but I, I want to see better position in the lead. It's a, a fuller split from everybody. I don't want to pick on one person in particular. It's a general statement. But I love that. Pike double back. That was Great a difficulty. Routine. Small hop on the dismount. Other than that, there was nothing wrong. And because of the difficulty of the dismount, the judge could take a smaller deduction on that landing. What I like, too, is she spread the difficulty out from start to finish. Absolutely. Here's Jesse Jordan, fourth up in the floor exercise for LSU, her fourth and final discipline of this dual meet. Jesse has not missed floor the entire season, and I want you to really pay attention to her second tumbling pass coming up. In just a minute. Nine for Sarah DeMeo on the floor, on the beam for Alabama. She did a back one and a half to a front full. More difficulty in the middle pass than, we, than we, what we've seen from any other athlete tonight. And personally, I love seeing the difficulty in all three passes. The judges have to look at that down the road. It's definitely going to make a difference at nationals. Absolutely. As long as it's executed well. <laughs> so again, here comes the strategy. Do you put in the more difficulty and risk? having a greater execution deduction. If you're going for the national championship, you definitely want to go for it. But that's interesting because her last tumbling pass had a lower level than the first two. So distribution of elements, it went down a little bit. Love this middle pass. Back one and a half twist, immediate front full. Very difficult to keep it straight and on the corner line. Sarah DeMeo so far has the high score for the beam with a 9-9 and still to come, Gerilyn Stack-Eaton, followed by Ashley Priest. Here's Stack-Eaton. Gerilyn is having a fantastic competition with the exception of the vault landing, which looked like a surprise landing. She has really hit solid, beautiful routines. She has, she's had a great meet so far tonight on bars and floor exercise. The other thing I like about her is when she makes small adjustments, she, she covers them so well. Jesse Jordan gets a 9.825 for LSU on the floor exercise. This is a little different right here. A front aerial to immediate back handspring gives her the bonus from the front aerial for difficulty and then bonus for the combination. She does it extremely well, so smooth and the transition is perfect. She has good distribution of elements throughout the routine, putting some of the bonus at the beginning and some close to the end of the routine. Nice. 
Very solid. That one is really, really good to right now. After all that pressure at the beginning. Back over to the floor exercise. Reagan Corville going fifth for LSU. Please welcome Reagan Corville. Just as I saw in their competition against Florida, they rise to the occasion when they're competing against a top-ranked team. They perform and compete so well. You know, actually, Kathy, except for the landings on vaulting, LSU's really done a nice job tonight. As I said, that was their one missed opportunity. Well, a little whopper jaw, but she bumped, she squared it off before the landing. And it was way up there. Jarlin Stack Eaton scores a 9.875. Difficulty in the middle pass. You haven't seen much of that tonight. Just her teammate did that earlier with the double back in the middle pass. Off a pipe double back. Strong finish. She's actually got the highest total in the meet tonight in terms of all four of her scores. Her all around and her consistency throughout the meet has been better than anyone else in the competition. As I said, she's a little bit whopper, jaw whopper jawed in the air, but she squares it off in time for the landing. And the final routine for Alabama in this dual meet Ashley Priest. The score to beat in the beam is the 9.9 .9 put up by Sarah DeMeo. It is Priest. Now, in a team full of natural balance beam workers, Ashley is, is a premier balance beam worker. Really, the dance. She moves so quickly, so rapidly. I think our one complaint is that so much of the difficulty is all in one place. Absolutely. I mean, the very beginning of the routine, Almost all of her bonus is right at the beginning. I love it. There's nothing else you can say, but when you have an athlete of this caliber, unfortunately, that's what the officials do. They can find little things and, and pick them out. When you have an athlete with a lot of mistakes, they get away with a lot, too. Uh, her execution's impeccable, her difficulty at the beginning. She has a relatively short routine, and the level of the routine does go down as she goes towards the end and does an easier dismount. And by down, we don't mean performance-wise or execution, but just if there's an element of difficulty at the end of the routine, it might just give it that last little bit of spark. Right, absolutely. Just maybe put that cheap jump at the end instead of the beginning, and you have a completely different distribution of elements. Undeniably, though, a very, very solid, solid if not beam. spectacular finish for Alabama and Ashley Priest. Now on to the final participant for LSU, Lamincia Hall. Reagan Corville scored a 9.9 .9 preceding her. That's the high score for LSU in the floor exercise. We'll see if Mincy can top her. Well, I think this is going to be a very fun routine. She can definitely tumble. She gets way up in the air. And she has a lot of fun. <laughs> you can see a few of the students <laughs> dancing in the audience over there in the yellow wigs. <laughs> Boy, I think her second somersault actually rose. She continued to go up. Ashley Priest scoring a 9.925 on the beam. So she'll take the individual title in that category. Like we said, her difficulty on beam was phenomenal, and Alabama rocked on beam tonight. Final score for Alabama, just tabulated 197.025, about what you expected. That's exactly, and what they needed, a great away score. And Mincy, she is just gonna bring it home here for LSU too. Oh yeah. And this could be a high score for them as well. <laughs> Be looking at a high 
my score of the night. <laughs> wow. The crowd is on their feet. That's a goosebump moment. A great way to finish this final SEC dual meet of the 2012 season. Mincy Hall brings the house down, and we'll come back with your final scores and final thoughts right after this. Back inside the Pete Maravich Assembly Center to wrap things up, and it was Mincy Hall who owned this building with the final performance of the night. This is why you compete at home. It is such a grand feeling. The energy in the arena is fantastic. So did Alabama accomplish what they set out to on this road meet? Absolutely, their team score is more than a half a point higher than anything they posted so far this season. They got the jump, do, job done on floor and on balance beam after a fall, came back and hit five in a row. And it doesn't get any easier for the Crimson Tide. They have to travel to take on number two, Oklahoma. Next up for LSU, it's number 19, NC State. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPNU.com. For Suzanne Yachlin and Kathy Johnson-Clark, I'm Rich Hollenberg saying so long from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where the Crimson Tide roll on. They remain unbeaten in their quest to repeat as national champions in women's gymnastics. For everybody here on the ESPNU crew, I'm Rich Hollenberg saying so long from the Pete Maravich Assembly Center.